Good afternoon. It's five o'clock here in Denmark. My name is Pal Andersen, and I'll be giving this uh, webinar here on um, our new uh, solution for structural health monitoring. Um, that is a combination of our um, Artemis mobile software and a presentation uh, layer on the webs uh, on the web portal. So um, I'll just uh, go ahead with. Um, little outline here that shows what it is that we are going to talk about here. First of all, I'd like to give a short introduction to uh, the concept of uh, structural health monitoring and then continue to what it is that we are doing that is vibration-based structural health monitoring. Then I'd like to introduce this uh, Artemis SHM uh, solution we have and then give a case study that uh, presents uh, how it's working on, on some real data. And then finally, some remarks and conclusions. So this is uh, the outline for this uh, next hour or so uh, of a webinar. So let's just start uh, defining what uh, structural health monitoring is. And if you look at, for example, Wikipedia, it says these uh, three lines here that it involves observation and analysis of a system over time using some periodical sample response uh, measurements. And then uh, we do this in order to monitor changes of material and uh, geometric properties uh, of a structure. So this is, you could say, a very broad uh, definition of uh, structural health monitoring that also uh, includes a lot of other disciplines than just uh, analyzing vibrations. Um, but in any case, as these pictures show, there is a, a good reason to do it because sometimes uh, failures cannot be prevented. And in some times, they also have really catastrophal uh, uh, ways to behave and uh, things uh, results to happen. So um, let's just go over a few of the collapses we have had uh, the recent years, just when it comes to bridges. There is a list here of uh, some that uh, at least I could find uh, on Google um, that uh, just shows that this is a worldwide problem. It is not just in the Western world or in the, some other places. No, this is actually everywhere that uh, sometimes uh, there are collapses that are caused by different things. But if you had some kind of monitoring uh, placed on these uh, structures here, you would most likely be able to track or detect some of this before it, it uh, ended up in a collapse. So. This is a good motivation for uh, you could say trying to answer this uh, question here. Why do structural health monitoring? And uh, well, there are many reasons you could say, but uh, first of all, we have structures that are aging. Uh, we have this all the time, but now there's a lot of infrastructure, for example, that is uh, pretty old and is still uh, in use every day, maybe more than it was actually designed to be used uh, in uh, whenever it was built. And that means there is a growing risk of failures uh, on these uh, structures here. And then uh, in order to prevent uh, this, uh, the failures of these structures here, uh, you then do inspections. And uh, if you don't have a, some kind of, um, let's say, smart uh, structural health monitoring system, then you will have to design, you would say, an inspection scheme that allows you to go out on fixed intervals and do inspections and perhaps also maintenance uh, of, of the, the structure that you are monitoring. But you can also uh, try to uh, do a little bit more smart and then place some sensors uh, uh, on the, the structure and other devices perhaps that can help you measuring what's going on. But at least if you place some uh, accelerometers and uh, put some data acquisition uh, systems uh, on the sites um, and then do measurements, then you actually uh, are able to uh, inspect and do maintenance in a, in a better way. You can actually plan better when you should do uh, this, the inspections and perhaps even also the maintenance. This is what we call predictive maintenance. And it also allows you to uh, more quickly uh, discover when things are going wrong. When you have a slow and growing damage, or if you have some severe damage caused by an earthquake or a ship collision or something, this can actually be uh, detected more or less the minute when it happened. 
So there are many reasons you could say uh, to uh, put uh, permanent in, uh, monitoring systems on, uh, on structures in order to be able to better detect what's going on in due time. This will, uh, of course, uh, result in some benefits if you do this. First of all, hopefully you can uh, prevent loss of lives and properties. You may also be able to prevent that you are doing too few or too many inspections. Uh, too few can, of course, uh, result in that you don't, uh, you don't uh, discover when something is wrong and uh, it actually ends up in a collapse uh, between the inspections. If you do too many, this is, of course, also a nuisance. It's expensive, but it's also a nuisance to uh, the people that are actually using uh, the structure. Um, so there are many reasons to uh, be able to better uh, predict how many inspections that are actually needed and when they should be done. There is also uh, the case here that, with, uh, that you don't have so much uh, downtown that <laughs> downtime. Um, in the case uh, you have it monitored, and that means that you you actually avoid these uh, unnecessary inspections and perhaps also maintenance. In the case you are monitoring a whole range of structures in your community, for example, and you are perhaps having an earthquake or some other severe event, storm, and so then you might have the problem that you have many structures that potentially are damaged um, after this event. And uh, you might only have a, you could say, a limited amount of inspection resources available. And having monitored structures allows you then better to plan where these limited amount of inspection resources you have actually should start uh, doing inspection. By having uh, all the structures, the major structure infrastructure, for example, bridges and so on in a, in a community uh, monitored, you can actually determine which one have suffered, suffered any kind of structural change and which one seems to be uh, more or less untouched by the event that has happened. And this allows you better to, uh, to guide the inspection resources out to the right uh, places. And remember that if it's an earthquake, you might actually have several earthquakes and aftershocks after uh, aftershock where you actually have to repeat this procedure here over and over again. So it makes uh, a lot of sense to monitor structures and of course uh, do analysis of the measurements that you are obtaining. So this uh, leads us to what it is that we are doing uh, in this company here. We are Con uh, concerned about vibration-based structural health monitoring. This is what we do. And uh, this is, uh, of course, uh, you would say the analysis uh, of measurements that, uh, that we are doing then with the, our software. And you can say that uh, what we are looking for is a kind of uh, some, a set of dynamic parameters that describe the behavior of a structure. And this, these uh, dynamic parameters you can actually consider like a kind of a fingerprint of the structure. And as long as the structure is intact, these fingerprints, they are not changing. They are the same. The minute that this uh, fingerprint changes, well, that actually means that there is uh, some kind of change in the structure. And it's actually then the, the vibration-based uh, SHM systems uh, that uh, you could say the role is to analyze measurements uh, find these the dynamic parameters and then over time determine if these are changing or not. And if they are changing, of course, then alert uh, the users of the SHM system uh, in order to uh, make them uh, react and do inspections on, on uh, the structures, etc. And here it, of course, matters how good you are in determining this fingerprint here. Uh, the more sensitive you have algorithms uh, and the more you can uh, avoid, you could say, false alarms and stuff like that, uh, the, in a better situation, uh, you are then in a better situation to actually detect an early damage. Um, and I'm trying to visualize this below here that we have a very nice clean fingerprint here and then we have a blurry version over here. So what we are trying to do in uh, our company is to develop methods that are really sensitive to uh, even small changes. And uh, we are also trying to develop parallel methods so that we are not just trusting one method. We actually need to have multiple methods of different types that can detect if there are changes or not. Just to be absolutely sure that we are not just having false alarms, 
and actually having a, a definitive changes. There are many different methods, methods available when you have measurements, accelerations or other types of uh, dynamic measurements. There are different ways you can actually then uh, determine these fingerprints, the dynamic parameters that describe uh, how uh, the structure behave. And there are some, you could say, some uh, different values that are parameters that are directly uh, related to the measurements. And uh, I hear in parents is right that this is a kind of a local analysis you can do because when you are analyzing the channels, the, the, the measurement that comes out of a channel directly, you are actually analyzing what's going on on the spot where you are measuring. So this is what I would call a local analysis. And there are different ways you can then study, you would say, what's going on locally. And this can be, for example, studying of uh, the statistical parameters that you can extract from each of the measurement channels. You can also try to do some spectral analysis. Uh, this allows you then to um, see if you have peaks that are growing in height or they are moving uh, position uh, in, in frequency, which, uh, of course, in any case uh, is uh, indication that something is changing. Then you also have uh, what we call interstory drift analysis which allows you to, uh, to study the, the, the relative uh, displacement of uh, different kinds of structure or substructures or elements of your structure. This is typically columns, reinforced concrete columns that you would like to measure because you, they, they can only uh, you could say resist a certain amount of relative drift, as, as it's called, uh, before they are cracking. So uh, by being able to uh, measure in the top and the bottom of these, uh, these columns here, you can actually then uh, get this interstory drift calculated. Again, a local um, detection tool, uh, a way to detect what's going on locally in a column in this case here. Then we can switch to the more global uh, types of analysis. And here it's, uh, of course, uh, operational model analysis that we are considering. And there are different kinds of um, uh, methods available on the market today. We have something I term it a manual uh, operational model analysis tool. Uh, it's very widely used actually. It's something we developed uh, about 25 years ago, these uh, frequency domain decomposition methods. Uh, they are really easy to implement uh, and also to use because you're just pick picking on the peaks and then you can get a mode shape and you can get a frequency and uh, in the extended versions you can also get damping. So they are very easy to work with. From our point of view, it's a little bit problematic to use them because first of all, um, it's very difficult to optimize them in a robust way. If you have uh, repeated or closely spaced modes, if you have something that is symmetric you are measuring on, you will have this. Then it's also very uh, difficult to actually separate these modes in a, in a robust way. And also, if you have a noisy measurements, uh, suddenly the, the, the modes tends to disappear a little bit in, uh, in the noise. And again, the peak peaking, automatic peak peaking can be different, difficult. So it's a, it's a method that we use when we are setting up projects and if we are doing detailed analysis on a, on a measurement. But for, you could say, this kind of uh, long-term monitoring uh, of a structure, we tend to not uh, use this one here. There are other methods also available that are, can be optimized. And uh, some of the popular ones are also to try to adapt input-output mode analysis tools. Uh, these are typically uh, defined in terms of a rational fraction of uh, two polynomials. Um, and then uh, you can then, uh, you could say, modify your response measurements so that they actually look like a frequency response function and then putting that into these methods you can then get the mode parameters out. So this is a way to do it. You are adapting your data to a method. Um, then there are other types. We have covariance-driven uh, and data-driven uh, stochastic soft space identification methods. And uh, in our case, uh, we tend to, uh, to like the uh, data-driven uh, types of them, and uh, especially uh, the one that uh, our say most powerful method, the UPCX method, this is one that we, we really prefer. This one not only estimates uh, the mean values of the mode parameters, you also get the covariance matrix of the different mode, 
uh, model parameters uh, identified. Besides operational model analysis tools, another kind of global analysis is the damage detection tools. Here we are not estimating the modes first. No, we are simply uh, estimating a state space model in a reference state. And then we are estimating a similar state space model in some potential damage state. And then we are trying to look for the difference between these two. So this uh, type of methods here that we are using here is a kind of distance measure. We measure, you would say, geometrically the distance between these two, uh, these two uh, state space systems here. And as long as the distance is zero or close to zero, we are happy. Everything is good. When the structural dynamics inside the, the new state space system start not looking like the reference, then the, this distance here will increase between the two. And we then have what we call a, a damage, or we can detect that we have a change that could lead to a damage or, or be caused by a damage. Uh, so this is the kind of tools uh, that are the ones we have here. These are uh, based on this chi-square statistics. And uh, we also have a kind of a hybrid where we are actually are using the chi-square statistics, but we are actually uh, using mode parameters and their uncertainties obtained from the UPCX method. We use those as, uh, you could say, the, the basis of this uh, chi-square testing here. So this is another way to combine the different uh, things, operational mode analysis and uh, the more traditional damage detection tools. So that's a whole range of different methods available, and there's probably even more than this, but the, this is what I could fit into one flight. But there are many, many, many uh, different uh, tools available that uh, try to, uh, to do the same, to figure out is there any change in the structure, in, in, the, in the dynamics of the structure or not. This leads me to, uh, you could say, the um, introduction to this uh, new solution we have where we try to, you could say, uh, both uh, handle that we can measure, we can get measurements in from many, many places. We can do analysis and we can also do a nice presentation uh, of, the, of uh, the results on a web page. So this is uh, what we call the Artemis SHM system. So it actually involves uh, our core product, that is the Artemis Modal Pro, uh, Pro version here of, uh, of our software here. This is the one that uh, is actually the, you could say, the, the core of, of this, uh, this system here. This is the one that is uh, producing all the results based on uh, measurements. Measurements, we can read measurements uh, through files normally. So normally we would get files, I say in quotes, near real time, because files are typically uh, arriving every 10 minutes or so from a data acquisition system uh, that is, is uh, uh, monitoring a, a structure somewhere. Something like every 10 minutes, you will get a new file. And then uh, that means that we can quite fast actually get results processed and, uh, and also make quite fast notifications. But it's only in re near real time. You cannot do it real time because it's not as it's happening. But you don't have to wait a day you perhaps have to wait an hour or so to complete a measurement and the analysis then takes a few minutes and then that's it then you have a result so that means if you have a, a bridge that is closed due to an earthquake you might have to wait half an hour or so before you can actually open the bridge again because nothing happened um, so we have uh, all the different tools that uh, I explained before. We have some of them uh, chosen as our standard tools for operational model analysis. We use the UPCX method. We can also use other SSI methods, but uh, this is the one that we normally prefer. Damage detection, there we have three different methods. They work in parallel. So they, they take the same data, they do their own job with the trying to find the damage uh, indicator, and then uh, you have three different uh, damage indicators. What we then do is we actually join those together through a control chart. And we do that in order to minimize false alarms. Because normally, if there is a false alarm from one of these uh, damage detection methods, it is not uh, 
normal that it actually also appears in, in some of the others. So it's a way to, uh, to minimize uh, false alarms. And of course, we can also process uh, channels and get statistics out and we can do the trending of it. And also interstory drift analysis can be performed. So we have a lot of parameters, you know, coming out every time that uh, you are having, you're feeding in a new measurement here, you get a whole bunch of parameters. And what we have then done is we have tried to uh, uh, comprise this into uh, fewer, you would say, parameters because it can be difficult actually to, uh, to assess if something has happened or not based on diagrams that goes up and down. So what we do is we, we have kind of two steps we go through. First of all, we try to uh, formulate a kind of a status value for each of the modes that are being tracked and each of the damage indicators that we are calculating. So we are trying to put then a value that is uh, either safe, critical or unsafe, uh, basically. Um, and then uh, it's very easy then to see which of the indicators that are actually reacting on a certain uh, change uh, at a certain point of, in time. And then what we do with these uh, individual indicators we get out or status values, we join them together to form a single overall health status value. This is the one we have listed here. This value here typically uh, has uh, three color codes here. It's safe. That means that we don't, uh, we have not detected any uh, any uh, changes. If it's uh, going to the yellow part, it is in a critical state. That means that uh, we should probably start uh, thinking about doing something here because uh, it's going the wrong way. That's when this value is between 90 and uh, 50 percent. When it drops to below 50 percent, then we are in the unsafe state. That means that at least 50 percent of our damage indicators that we are monitoring, they have actually now reported that we are in an unsafe state. So we are trying to uh, make it uh, a single uh, value that allows us to quickly get an overview what structures, if you have many structures that you're monitoring, which one is actually now in a, in a state where we need to uh, dive further into uh, the analysis and see what's going on and perhaps even go and inspect the structure. I will show this a little bit later with some example, uh, how we actually are then using this. And then finally, all this is done on a server. You can install Artemis on some server somewhere. Uh, we prefer that you install it quite close to, you could say, uh, where your data acquisition system is, because this uh, means that you do not have to spend, uh, you could say, bandwidth uh, transferring large quantity of data over the internet in order to process it somewhere else uh, using Artemis. It's better if you can do it locally in, in uh, around where you have your uh, your actual data acquisition system uh, generating the files. And then once you have results uh, generated from Artemis, what we do is then we stuff these results and only the results into a database, an SQL database that can actually be um, placed anywhere uh, as long as we can get a connection strings to it string to it from Artemis, then it can actually be placed uh, wherever it's desirable to have it. So this could, for example, typically be around where you have your, perhaps a uh, kind of office where you are monitoring all these things. Maybe you want to have this uh, database lying there. But it's very easy because it's, it's few parameters that need to be transferred every time. It's only some mode parameters, some mode shapes, and damage indicators and so on. Very few uh, amount of data is actually necessary to transfer them. And uh, once you have it in the database, it's a kind of an open access. You can actually retrieve the data in many ways then. And uh, one of the ways uh, that we have proposed is uh, this uh, new web portal that I will also be showing a little bit later that uh, can be accessed through this, uh, this uh, link here. And besides showing it on this one here, it's also uh, possible, of course, then to monitor this uh, database here and see if there are alerts coming from Artemis to modal. And then if that's the case, then you can actually then have a service that can uh, actually um, notify you either per email or per SMS. 
uh, if there are alerts to, to be notified about. So this is, you could say, the, the overview we have of the system. We, we need measurements. We have installed Artemis somewhere on a powerful uh, server. We process the measurements. We put uh, the results to a, a database, and then you can access it uh, from uh, anywhere through uh, a web browser. And uh, as I said before, we, uh, we are quite open to uh, measurement uh, because we have for many years uh, developed uh, different kinds of uh, upload facilities for all kinds of file uh, formats that are used in the, in the industry. And that means that we can actually uh, read from all kinds of formats uh, that are available uh, today commercially. We can also read it from uh, all kinds of places as long as, as uh, we can access the data in some way uh, on the server that is processing it. Then it can come from FTP or from a network a attached storage or locally or even from a cloud. So um, it's very open in this way here. We can also uh, compose, you could say, uh, when we want to analyze, how many times a day, when we want to start and, uh, and so on, and also the length we want to uh, monitor or analyze. All this can also be set up. So that means even though we get these 10 minute files popping in all the time, uh, we have the ability to, to uh, look into these files and then put them together, merge them. So we get one or two hour files, depending on the size of the structure normally. And in this way, uh, we make use of all the, the, the data in the best possible way. So this is a, uh, this is uh, how we uh, we try to uh, you would say manipulate measurements, get measurements uh, effectively into the system here and and process them. Here we can actually see the the actual uh, you would say diagram how we have uh, set it up. So everything is centered around Artemis model. Here we uh, normally when we set up the project, we will use our graphical user interface, our GUI. And then we will configure Artemis, uh, the project, uh, with the first measurements that we can get from the structure. We will set up the geometry and, uh, and everything that is needed. And then normally we will then save this project here and close Artemis. And then start a so-called SHM automation service that we have. This is basically just Artemis without the graphical user interface. It can run without uh, having to be logged into a specific user account on a server. And that means that you can actually uh, close down uh, your remote desktop to, um, to this server here and uh, Artemis will then be running in the background, uh, analyzing the data. The way this is done is that uh, we, uh, we instruct a service uh, using as an XML file here that we configure uh, through a graphical interface we have. Here we instruct what uh, structures that should be analyzed with this service here and, and uh, the Artemis uh, installation we have. You can then have multiple structures being analyzed with the same license of Artemis. And it's all administrated through this XML file here. You simply set up that you want to have uh, these uh, three structures here, they should be measured in sequence or, or analyzed in sequence. So what happens is the service looks uh, for the next available uh, project uh, that, is on the, uh, that is configured to be uh, read. It opens it in Artemis, it reads data, and uh, then uh, analyze this, it saves it to the database, it, uh, then uh, there's another service that is making sure if there are alerts or not, uh, that should be uh, forwarded to SMS or email. But once we are then done with this project here, we have done uh, been doing this analysis here, the project is automatically saved, and the next project in line is then opened and then analyzed inside Artemis. So it's a kind of a sequence where you are opening analyzing, saving, opening, analyzing, saving, over and over again. And you can actually, in this way, uh, make very effective use of a single license of Artemis. 
because uh, if you if you are okay with perhaps having to wait a little bit on the results, you can actually have many many uh, structures uh, put to the same uh, server in this way here. So this is the way we have designed it, and then we uh, you should basically think that it's Artemis here running. And then if you want to see what's going on, you can either open Artemis. If you have to do that on the server, you will have to stop the service because you cannot open this, uh, these projects here two places at one time. So if, it's, uh, if, you, if you want to see it on the server, you will have to close then uh, the service or stop it. But then you can open it and you can actually view then what's going on uh, inside a specific project. If you don't want to do this, you just want to have it running all the time, you can actually log in through our web portal uh, and then uh, see what's going on. You, and I will show this uh, a bit later, that you can actually see how uh, things are developing, how the modes are coming in and, and so on. So you can use the web portal to be the, uh, the tool that allows you to see what's going on on the structure without having to interfere with the, the processing and the analysis done on your server. So this is, uh, you could say, in total, what we call the Artemis SHM system. And just to uh, uh, introduce uh, this uh, web uh, platform here, we have developed this one here that we start out from a map where all the structures that you are monitoring with your account is actually located. And if everything is good, then uh, the dot that you see here for a structure is green. If it's in a critical state, it becomes yellow. And if it's like here in a really bad shape, then it becomes unsafe and it becomes red, this dot here. And then you can click on this uh, dot here and then you can get all the information uh, much more detailed of what's going on here. This is developed through this, uh, this uh, web site here that we have here. Um, and the way it works is that uh, this one here is a kind of a demonstration uh, uh, web portal but uh, for specific companies that uh, is going to, uh, to use it, there will be a subdomain, like our own subdomain here, there will be swips at artemisshm.com. So this is just like if you are using WebEx, you can just log into your own account there and then uh, you have everything that is related to you and not, nothing related to others in this way here. But, the whole thing here can actually also be integrated into a third party web portals if needed. This is another option. But of course, we uh, right now we are, we are trying to uh, motivate people to actually uh, use our own platform here because uh, there are many nice bells and whistles here. Let's see, let's try to show a case study where we can show some of this. Uh, we have this uh, data here from, uh, this is a benchmark project made some years ago on an Austrian bridge. This is uh, this uh, uh, highway bridge here. It was decided that this should be demolished back in 2008. And just before they started doing that, then uh, some researchers, they were allowed to introduce different kinds of damage, especially in this region here around this pier here. So here we have a list of all the things that was done over a, I think a few day uh, period of time. And uh, at, the, at the same time, there was a monitoring system measuring in, uh, <clears throat> I think, 16 channels uh, spread all over the bridge, constantly measuring what's, what's going on and uh, dumping these uh, files into uh, some folder. And this is the data that we are, have been allowed to uh, use as a kind of a case study here. And here we can see some of the most fundamental modes. There is a kind of a transverse mode here. Then there is a bending mode here. There is an, another a bending mode here and another one here, as we can see here. So they are around, uh, what is the first one? Around three and a half hertz, something, uh, ranging up to around nine hertz in this case here. This is, uh, this is just an analysis made with Artemis uh, some years ago. Now, we have then set it up on a server. And um, there was 681 measurement files that was usable. There was some that has problems, um, but there was this amount of, uh, of uh, measurements available and they have just been uh, loaded automatically one by one and analyzed uh, with uh, the software. 
And here we can then see how it looks inside Artemis uh, um, at the server that has been running it. And I can try to actually connect to this server here. Let me see. It is actually this one here. So this is the actual project that you see here now. And uh, again, you can see uh, the mode tracking up here of the four modes. We can we can see around this moment here in time. This is when they start introducing the first uh, cuts in the pier, where they're lowering it. Um, and then uh, as they are progressing in the different uh, uh, damaging of the bridge, we can see how it affects all the different uh, mode parameters here. This one, in fact, up here, there's nothing here. This uh, region here is simply disappear completely. This uh, this mode here it cannot be tracked. But it pops up again a little, a little bit later when they are lowering down uh, the, the, the pier again. So we can see a lot of uh, changes here. We also have uh, here a control chart that is actually the mix of uh, three different uh, methods, three different damage detection methods. And it's very clear that when we reach this moment here, we are passing this red threshold here and indicate that indicates that we actually have some damage in uh, going on now in the structure here. So we have all these uh, mode tracking and we have uh, all the other indicators coming from damage detection. And all of this you can see up here uh, is put together in this uh, SHM status overview window here. So uh, the first one we have here, these are the damage uh, detection tools. All three of them has been used. You can see here that uh, the current value of the last measurement that has been analyzed is this value here. There is automatically some thresholds calculated based on uh, 95 and 99 percent confidence interval, um, which allows us then to check when uh, we are getting in and out of these uh, these uh, different uh, limits. Um, and we can see when we are passing out of the 99 percent um, threshold. This is then when we are turning into the unsafe uh, region, uh, and this is why you see it lighting up here in red. And you can see this ha happens for all the damage indicators. And since the control chart here is actually a, a merging of these uh, three indicators, of course, this one also reacts uh, red here, unsafe like this. Then down here we have uh, the mode tracking. And you can see uh, again, there is one mode here at four hertz. This one here, because we're using this UPCX method, we actually have the mean value available, but we also have the covariance. So that means we have the standard deviation of the frequencies in this case here. And that means that we can actually produce, again, some uh, thresholds based on the statistics of uh, uh, we have from uh, the mode, mode analysis. This allows us then to uh, actually introduce these two thresholds here. And with the current value we have now of this frequency here, we are then outside this uh, unsafe threshold here. And this is why this one lights up in red. But in this case here, we are at the very last measurement and there is severe damage going on here. And that means that are actually some of them, these uh, modes here, they can no longer be, uh, they're not present in this, uh, this data anymore. They are simply away because the structure has changed its behavior so much that they are not available anymore. And you can see the two ones that are not available in this last measurement here are the ones that are grayed out here. They are simply, as I say here, not available. But we have another one here, this one here at nine hertz. I guess this is uh, the one we have here. In fact, this uh, last uh, frequency here looks like the ones we have in the gray zone here, that is our reference part here. And that's why it actually lights up in, uh, in green here. So you can say this mode here is not particularly sensitive to the kind of damage that has been introduced to this bridge here. But hope, or luckily, some of the others are. And overall, we can see that we have more than 50% of the indicators. They are now in red unsafe state which means that the overall state down here is unsafe. So we have a single parameter here that sums up everything that we see in this diagram here. And it says that we are now in this unsafe state here. And uh, let's try now to uh, get out of this, just to see um, 
how we then communicate actually with the, you could say the database, because right now we are inside a server where we are producing the results. We need these results to be forwarded to a database so we can see it somewhere else. And we have something here called SHM configuration here. This is the place where we configure for this project here where things should go, which database to communicate with and, and what should we actually synchronize. So the first thing we do in this uh, configuration here is to uh, figure out where should we get the measurements from. And in this case here, it's a, it's a network attached uh, storage we are using here. So we have a kind of a path to that one here. The next you have to specify is also what type of file it is that you're using. We are using some binary files here. But you can see here, there is a whole range of different files here uh, available uh, to be used. All these files, they are supported by Artemis and therefore also supported uh, by this Artemis SHM solution here. And then uh, we can go to uh, the database. Here we will first of all have to, of course, uh, connect to the database. So uh, we do that through this connection string here and then uh, some password and username and so on. And then we can see that we have a connection uh, that is valid here. And once we have done that, then we have to then uh, specify what is it actually we would like to put in the database. Because Artemis can produce a lot of results, but it might not be that you want to show all of them on your website. So here you check out which one it is that you would like to uh, put there. And then uh, automatically, every time you have new measurements being uh, loaded and analyzed, this synchronization will then be done with the database. But if you then need to force it to sync some of it, some of it this because you made some changes of some of uh, the analysis, then you can actually go to this uh, dialog here and you can actually then sync in the, manually in this way here. So this is uh, what we can do. Be besides this, of course, we can set up the notifications uh, if you want to do that by email, SMS and, and other things. This can also be accomplished from this dialogue here. But all of this is on the server side. Let's try to go to, um, you would say, the, the other side, to the client side. <clears throat> and this uh, looks something like this. Here we have uh, our web portal where we have um, a list. This is, a, you would say, the, the overview page we have of um, of this uh, S101 highway bridge analysis. And the first thing we can see when we log into it is actually the latest uh, measurement. Let's see where do I have my mouse here. So this is the latest uh, available uh, measurement that has been analyzed. We can over here see that the overall status of the structure right now is unsafe and in red zone. Down here, we can get the same diagram as we saw in Artemis before. So we can get uh, a quick overview, which of all our indicators are actually uh, uh, turning out to be red now and uh, causing uh, the alarm and which one are not. This is, you could say, the first uh, um, easy overview of, uh, of the results for this particular measurement here. And then you can continue. You can then uh, go into what we call the analysis level. And here you can start retrieving uh, information about uh, any of the measurements that have been uh, um, processed. But of course, uh, in this case, it will be the, the, the very last one that caused an alarm that you would probably like to focus on. And you do that again by simply uh, selecting it in this uh, list here. And then up here, you then in this tree here, you select what it is that you would like to, uh, to uh, study. And uh, you uh, select the things and then you uh, press this button called update diagrams. And then you will see all the things appearing over here, uh, like you see here. And here it's, uh, you would say, animation of uh, the modes, or mode shapes that you can see uh, on the next one here. We can actually then see uh, the tracking of the modes. And we can also here see uh, the control charts, uh, how it looks uh, in this case here. So all the things that you had in Artemis, basically they are available here also. Not all of them, but more and more is appearing in this web portal here. But at least now we have these major tools that are required in order to uh, effectively study what's going on. 
let's just try to uh, start a web browser. I see I have it here somewhere, I think. Here we have, uh, you see, I can log into uh, this, um, this web page here. Uh, you are then asked to log in to uh, something, and uh, we have a demo account here that I can try and log into. And after a while, it shows then this map here. And as you can see here now, it's uh, there are two structures here in this uh, demo account here. One of them is the S101 bridge. The other one is the Z24 bridge that was having a, a similar destiny as uh, the S101. That it was it was demolished uh, and the researchers were allowed to do testing just before uh, it went to the grave so uh, it's exactly the same kind of procedure that was happening to this bridge here so we go here to uh, s101 if i click here on it i can then go to the details here and here you can see now i get uh, first of all my um, my overview page here and i get the uh, the structure here where I can see all the sensors where they are located and so on. There is also a list of alerts that has been happening that uh, if we had uh, SMS and email uh, associated with this for notification, these would have then been uh, sent out. But uh, we can then go to uh, more details. We can go to the analysis part here. And as you can see here now, we have uh, this uh, tree structure over here that you saw before. First of all, we can say, okay, we would like to study the, the latest measurement here. Uh, let's try and look at some geometry. We can also try to uh, look for having a mode table here, so we can activate the mode table here. So that means we will see the modes of the last measurement in this case here. We can also try to enable uh, looking at the frequencies, how they change over time. You can also look at other changes if you like, but normally frequencies are preferred, of course. Uh, then uh, we have damage detection. Here we have the different uh, indicators. And again, we have the control chart where things are joined. And uh, we can try now to click the update button here that allows us then to uh, get in and see the things we have requested. And uh, again, we have uh, our, our geometry here. We can try to uh, see if we can uh, animate something here. There is a little bit of mode here. There is another one here. Let's see if I can give it a little bit more amplitude here. So in this way here, we can now see and inspect uh, these modes here uh, to see how they're looking. And of course, we can compare with the uh, modes uh, that have been made before perhaps a damage. This can be done by going through this list here and then uh, looking at similar things um, from uh, the past. Um, there is other modes here, like uh, this one here also. So it's a, it's a very convenient way to just have a quick look at the modes. Below here, we actually also have uh, then uh, the mode tracking. And again, we, have, uh, we can uh, get some information if we point here at the different uh, values here and when they are taken and so on. And the similar thing we have here for the damage detection, where we are now showing the control chart, and we can then see how these are, these are developing over time. So this is some of the things we have in our web portal here, uh, available right now. Let's see. I just have some final remarks now. Um, First of all, uh, there's a remark about uh, what we do compared to what others are doing. And if we look at the SHM, uh, you could say uh, vendors or producers of, uh, of uh, solutions uh, in this field here, most of them are probably related to hardware. So they are producing sensors and data acquisition systems and, and they have, uh, they, they work from installing this also. Uh, so what we have tried to do is try to um, link up with this having a very open platform that allows us actually to communicate with data that is being streamed in different ways and in different formats uh, depending on the different companies how they do it and we have different kinds of uh, formats uh, that are used uh, by the the major companies such as EVG format, uh, we have also a mini seed and, and so on. There are many, many different formats uh, out there. 
but uh, we have developed uh, you know features that allows us to open and read these files here. So this is, you could say, one of our focus areas. That is to be very open, so we can communicate uh, in this way here with the data that we need. But of, of course, also the other way that we can actually uh, save data in a, an open format in a SQL database that allows people to uh, develop their own way of uh, presenting um, the results or use our web portal if they like to do that. When it comes to analysis, this is another major part of our uh, focus. That is to be very effective in the analysis, and uh, we are trying to make absolute most use of our uh, 24 years of development of Artemis uh, software. And uh, we do that by uh, utilizing all the ones that we can optimize and run them in parallel so that we are sure we get some validated results out. There's nothing worse than having only a single, you would say, a technique. And then you get an alarm, but you don't know if this is a false alarm or it's a, it's a true alarm. So you have to wait perhaps one or two measurements more to see if it's repeated or not. It's better to have parallel analysis because false alarms normally is related to techniques and not so much uh, the data, at least if it's a uh, good quality data that you are retrieving. So this is a uh, remarks about uh, what our focus is. Uh, in this uh, company here. And if you want to say make use of this uh, Artemis SHM solution here, yeah, there are basically two ways of doing it. The one that our, uh, our customers has been using so far is that they purchase Artemis Model Pro and then a series of SHM uh, plug-in modules uh, that uh, allows them then to uh, produce the results that they are asking for. So this is then, uh, you know, that they're buying a, a license in some way and installing this on their own uh, servers or, or PCs. The other way that we are now trying to uh, promote and we recommend to uh, our uh, customers is to uh, make use of our new Artemis SHM solution where we have, you could say, software. The, the software is running normally, you would say, in-house here. It can also be uh, added and put in, and deployed on external uh, hosting environments. But we are we are deploying as many Artemis Model Pro, uh, you would say, licenses as needed in order to fulfill the requirements of a certain customer's uh, projects. Um, and the way we do it now is that we are we are not you would say selling this as a license. We are selling this as a subscription. Uh, instead, and it's all related to um, making it easier to get started, not having to do a big investment upfront um, in buying uh, several licenses of Artemis. And it's also a, a way to easily um, build up um, if you have more requirements for more structures or other types of pro processing and analysis. So therefore, we are using this subscription-based model now for this. And it really depends on uh, on the projects, you know, how many structures are going to be measured and, and, and analyzed, and how often are we going to analyze them, and uh, how much uh, instrumentation do we have, how many channels do we have to process, and what type uh, and number of analysis uh, modules are required for this, and uh, how many users are going to use uh, this uh, tool here, and so on. So there are different uh, dependencies on uh, the subscription fee, of course. But this is the way we uh, we are doing it with the Artemis SHM solution. So if you want to have more information, there are, of course, as usual, I would say, we have our YouTube channel where we place uh, all the information that uh, we normally do of videos and so on. And this uh, presentation here will most likely also appear there soon. And besides that, we have our website, of course. We have uh, sweeps.com, where you can find a lot of information about uh, Artemis and uh, also literature, papers written over the years. You can download Artemis model and test it out if you want. And of course, we have a, a dedicated uh, site, a website or page 
available for the Artemis SHM solution, where you can also download uh, more uh, information about uh, what it is that we, we can offer with this solution here. So I'd like to thank you very much for listening in. Thanks.